Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to find the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic secant of x. And so starting with y being equal to the inverse hyperbolic secant of x, we then can express it in terms of x like this, the natural log of 1 over x times the quantity 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. Then it's better to write it in this form because if we're going to take the derivative of that, which is the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic secant of x, then we can take the derivative of that expression the way we've written it there, and now it's called a quotient, and we're going to use the quotient rule. So this, therefore, the dy dx is going to be equal to, starting with, well, first of all, we take the derivative of the natural log, which means we're going to inverse that. So we have x divided by 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared times and I'll go ahead and put brackets around it like that. Now we're going to use the quotient of what's inside. So that means that we take the numerator, the, well, the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator, and the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of 1 is 0, so we get 1 half times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of what's inside, which would be a minus 2x. So it's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, minus the numerator, which is the quantity 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared, times the derivative of the denominator, which is simply just 1, all divided by the denominator squared. All right, so how do we simplify that? Well, let's go ahead and try to write this simpler. So we get dy dx is equal to, we still keep this here, which is x divided by 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared times. All right. So the twos canceled out. So we have an x times an x. That's x squared. So we end up with, well, there's a minus there. So it's minus x squared divided by this quantity right here, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared, like this. We have an x squared over here, so let me add that over here, x squared. And then on the right side, we have minus, here we have uh, the quantity 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared, all divided by x squared. So I wrote it as two separate fractions, because now you can see that if I want to write this over common denominator, I'm going to have to multiply this one by the square root of 1 minus x squared over here. So let's do that. So this is equal to x divided by 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared times. So we're going to write this all over a common denominator of x squared times the square root of 1 minus x squared. In the numerator, here we have a minus x squared, and they have minus this quantity right here, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared, multiplied times 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. There we go. And now you can see that when we we'll multiply this through, we'll end up something that we could probably simplify even further. So let's see. Here we have x divided by 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared times. Over here we have minus x squared. This times this will give us a minus square root of 1 minus x squared. And this times this, now notice we have a negative in front of it, so that will give us a minus 1 and uh, a minus x squared, because this times this will give us a minus x squared, but with a negative will give us a plus x squared right here, all divided by x squared times the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right. Now, I think we're in pretty good shape, and this is why. We have a minus x squared here and a plus x squared, so this cancels out this. And notice that we have, over here, a 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared, and here we have a minus 1 minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. So essentially, that can cancel out if we take the negative sign and bring it over here. So we're going to make this negative, so we can cancel this whole thing out like this, and cancel this out right here because this is essentially equal to that. What we have left, that becomes 1 in the numerator. And then we have an x over here and an x squared, so this cancels out with this. And finally, we can write, so let's go over here. Finally, we can write 
that dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to a minus 1 divided by, in the denominator, we're going to get an x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And since dy dx is equal to the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic secant of x, we can say that the d dx of the inverse hyperbolic secant of x is equal to minus 1 divided by x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's go ahead and put that down. So there it is. There's the inverse hyperbolic secant of x. Now, we can reverse that, which means that if we take this quantity right here, we can then say that the integral of 1 over x times the square root of 1 minus x squared dx is going to be equal to the negative inverse secant or hyperbolic secant of x. The negative here, of course, comes from the negative over there, but notice that now that we have the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic secant of x, we can then also use that expression and see if we have that in an integral sign, we then know what the integral of that is. And that's how it's done.